Hey guys, it's Brooke, and today I'm going to show you how I'm outlining my novel for NaNoWriMo. So I'm gonna start off by saying that this is definitely gonna be a lot more vlog-like than a sit-down video. The title makes it sound like a sit-down video, but it's gonna be a little bit vloggy because that's kind of just what I like to do. But I will be giving you some information on how I'm plotting my novel and getting ready for NaNoWriMo in November. So I started off my day with cappuccino and some egg bites from Starbucks because I mean, you can't outline a novel on an empty stomach. Anyways, I really think the most important ingredient right now is this, so. <laughs> so I'm a person who, for the longest time, I really like to use paper. So I would plot novels on loose leaf in notebooks, stuff like that. But I've kind of gotten away from that a little bit because I find it a bit easier to organize things electronically. So there's a few things that I like to do. And the main tool that I use is Trello for plotting my novels. So I'm gonna take you to the Trello website. So if you've never heard of Trello before, this will kind of give you an idea of what it is. So Trello is basically a tool that people use to work on projects, like with teams, I think. And for me, I obviously have used it for a different purpose. I have my project NYE for NaNoWriMo. For me, this process is just kind of a big mess and then I go and clean it up later. So I've started off with a chapter outline. So. Basically what I'm going to do is outline briefly in a couple sentences every chapter that I have going on. I've outlined chapter one and chapter two and then we'll just go from there. I have an ideas column which is basically just scenes that I want. So I'll give you an example. One of my scenes, it says she kisses someone on New Year's Eve and she's looking around and she's like, I'm not going to have anyone to kiss, whatever. And then she runs into this guy and they kiss on New Year's Eve. Obviously, you know, that's setting it up and he's gonna come back in later, so. But yeah, and then I have this one called Resolutions List because this book is a New Year's thing, so she's it's her New Year's Resolutions List. And then I have a relationship uh, list, which is kind of ideas about their relationship, about the love interest and the main character. And then I've only been working on this for like collectively probably like 10 or 15 minutes. So <laughs> there's not a lot going on here, but I'll pull up another board as well. And then we can kind of look at that too. I'm trying to think. So this is a fantasy novel that I've been working on. So I can show you the columns, some of the columns for this one. I can't show you all of them, but I have character inspiration, which is basically where I just drag in pictures and like it could be pictures of real people. It could be pictures of like sketches or just like right now, I guess I can kind of show you what I have. I literally just have a pair of these green eyes because I knew that I wanted my main, main character to have these like really, really striking green eyes. So the next four columns are for actual characters. So again, I have pictures dragged in there and then descriptions and stuff like that. And then I have two ideas columns because I think one of them just got too long and I, I started putting ideas in a new one. Main character name ideas, main character profile, magic system plot ideas, and then I plot it out based on app. I have an idea for the second main character's point of view. I have something called random paragraph, <laughs> antagonist. Yeah, so I just have a bunch of stuff there. So here's my biggest tip with Trello and kind of why I like to use Trello. I think it's really great because I didn't even show you, but you can drag those cards and those lists around and reorder stuff as you need. So it's super, super convenient. And that's why paper plotting or outlining really doesn't appeal to me as much anymore because with this, I can move stuff around. But if I'm doing it in like a notebook, for the most part, I can't move things around. The other thing with Trello, I have a Trello app on my phone, so it doesn't matter where I am, if I'm at work, if I'm on the couch, whatever, I don't have to have my laptop with me. If I have an idea regarding the story, I can just type it in there and it's it's great. I do the same thing with Google Drive. I have Google Drive on my phone and I have Google Docs and then I can type whenever I want. So typically that's my first step would be to create a Trello board for my story. And the fun thing, I'm sure you guys saw the background that I had there. You can change that background pretty much to anything you want. It's connected to Unsplash. So you can go to the background and you can click Unsplash photos and you can search for basically anything you want. So it's, it's really, really cool. And I think it's kind of like, it sets the vibe for your story, you know? So when we get to the vlog bit of this video, this is kind of what I'll be working on is my Trello board and then the next few things that I'm gonna show you. My second step is to create a Google Doc in Google Drive. I just made a folder called NaNoWriMo 2022 and we're going to create a new folder inside of that called Project NYE. And then you can change the colors of these. There's like a limited amount of colors. I really like these two kind of like neutrally beige pink colors. So I'll usually use that. 
Typically what I'll do is I'm gonna create a folder inside of this Google Doc or inside of this folder called draft one. And the reason that I wanna do that is because I wanna be able to keep track of my drafts. So, you know, you don't want everything to get jumbled up and I wanna make sure everything's really clean and organized. You can make that a color too. I usually don't go that far, but let's make it this like other color. Okay, so here's how I organize in Google Drive. So I make a Google Doc for every chapter. And I don't know how many chapters this is going to be right now, but we're just gonna start with chapter one as stories do. So when I'm outlining, and this is a little bit later in the process, but I'm gonna tell you how I use this Google Doc, Google Drive folder to outline. So I'm gonna create one for each chapter. And then when I start outlining, I'm gonna go in here and basically I'm just gonna write like one or two sentences that give me an idea of what's happening in that first chapter or in that chapter as a whole. So for example, for this one, I know that I wanna start it off with a, so start off with a fight between two characters. I'm not, not really gonna tell you who, but anyways, that's for me to know. And then set up for main character. Of course, that's really broad, but obviously that's, you know, that's what you wanna do. I will elaborate more. Sometimes I have whole scenes written that I'll dump into the chapter outline like this, but this is something that I found very helpful is to just write a few quick sentences so that when you open up a new doc, you're not like, oh my God, what am I doing here, you know? And then the way that I use the rest of this folder. So this is just a place where I can keep all my information about my story together. Sometimes I duplicate what I have in the Trello board. And honestly, I should probably link the Trello board here. I feel like that would be a super good idea. So we have this draft one folder. Sometimes I'll make like, a character profile folder because sometimes it's nice to have them on these in these docs instead of in Trello you can kind of do a little bit more with it I'll write a synopsis which will go somewhere I find synopsis to be really helpful when you're plotting and that's basically I just keep all of my information in here that I want and here and the Trello board is basically where I work so you can see I have my Trello board up here and then I have my Google Doc there and that's basically what this is gonna look like for the rest of Nano <laughs> this my second monitor is just gonna be this all the time typically when I writing I will I'll have my Trello board up on my big screen and then on my MacBook screen I'll have like the document that I'm actually writing in okay so what's next we've created our Google Drive and we've created our Trello board what do I do next <laughs> so there's a couple things and you might think like you haven't actually done any outlining but this is all just preparation and I think that if you can't have fun with it then why bother right so for me I need to set up something that makes me feel like I'm in the mood to write and this is what does it that Trello board. It's just fantastic for that. And another thing, and you guys probably already do this, but I love making Pinterest boards. So I'm gonna make a Pinterest board for this story. I did already start one with the Pinterest board. I, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit later when I'm actually working on it and adding stuff to it, but you guys all know what Pinterest is, I'm sure. And it's just a place where you can make a board and I will title it with my story and then I'll start adding inspirational pictures and stuff to there. And yeah, I just find that that really helps and it helps during the writing process as well not just outlining but I definitely think it helps with outlining too so, so now we're going to go on to the actual kind of content of plotting and how I actually outline my story I outline using save the cat and I'm trying to find it right now I don't know where it's hiding so I'll be right back all right so I found my save the cat and I'm gonna kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how I plot using this I have a complete full video on this apparently that I didn't even know about. So I'll put that somewhere in the cards and you guys can check that out as well. I don't remember how good it is. I think I got quite a few views, but I don't think it was that good. So anyways, <laughs> it was for a fantasy novel though. So it's a little bit more in depth. This one being a contemporary romance is gonna be a little bit different, so. And then if you're looking for another writing craft book suggestion, I have this one that's on character traits. It's called Writer's Guide to Character Traits, second edition. And I think this is really good for plotting out your characters and giving them dynamic personalities, so. My last thing that I wanna tell you guys about before I actually start outlining is if you watch Katie Wismer, um, she does this thing where she uses one specific perfume for her novel and she sprays it before she writes or whatever. And it's like a scent association thing. So <laughs> I decided to try that out a little while ago and I bought this perfume. It's actually, I'm pretty sure it's cologne actually, but I love it. So I was writing a novel where like that was the vibe. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it. Obviously this is a different novel, but I'm still going to do it. So it's, this is the stuff. This is 
and it's so funny actually that's is that gonna be mirrored i'm not sure but anyways this is the stuff it's like a little truffle size it's <laughs> it's little but it's not cheap um so anyways i'm gonna spray this and then we're gonna go nuts on this outlining and hopefully my goal today oh my gosh i only took the lid off and i can already smell it um my goal today is hopefully to outline like half of this half of this novel so if you're familiar with save the cat that would be kind of would it be through the fun and games portion let me see here yeah so it's going to be to the midpoint <laughs> okay this is obviously a very serious process because i put my hair up for it so so i'm actually just going to show you one more thing as well before we get started that i kind of didn't mention before because uh, surprise surprise i forgot about it so in addition to what's going on here i'm gonna make a third folder that's called outline and i do that frequently because even though I'm outlining chapter by chapter in draft one, this is going to be my Save the Cat outline. So I'm going to open up the new document, probably title it Save the Cat, and then here's what I'm going to do in the document. This is going to give you kind of a really good insight into how I'm outlining my novel. When I outline my novel, I plot pretty in depth my setup piece. So if you're not familiar with Save the Cat, I'll give you kind of a little idea of what I'm doing here. So. You have your opening image. This is your first beat with Save the Cat. So that's what I'm gonna type out is opening image. And then this is something that I'm gonna plot pretty pretty in depth. So it's, it's quick, it's just like a little one scene. It's gonna be probably like a paragraph. So they call this the before snapshot of your hero's journey basically. So it's gonna, you wanna be able to show what's wrong with their life, whatever. They also say this is where you're gonna set the tone of the book. So you wanna make sure that you know, if you're writing a mystery, if you're writing a uh, romantic comedy, like you want to convey that in this opening image and make sure that your tone matches the rest of the book. So this is something that I'm probably going to plan out pretty in depth, even though it's not very long. I think it's pretty important. Like if you've seen, if you've read A Court of Thorns and Roses, you know, that opening scene where Fair is in the woods and you learn a lot about her in that little bit, right? You know, she's in the woods, she's hunting and she's providing for her family and they're poor and it's winter and they're starving. Like, you know, you learn all these things. So that's her before snapshot. I don't know if that's a good example or not, but it's the best I can do right now. <laughs> We're gonna actually title this as act one as well, because that's, that is what it is. So act one, opening image, and then the next one is theme stated. So from my understanding, it is typically another character that is stating this theme to the main character. So the definition that Save the Cat has, it says it briefly alludes to the transformative journey that your hero will take and the flaws or flaws they will eventually conquer. So they say it's basically a life, a life lesson that is hinted at by a secondary character in the story. And I'm not sure that I really follow this one that much. And I think maybe sometimes it happens by accident. This one, I don't worry too much about. I think this is really easy to go back and put in later. For me, the most important beat in act one, like the most important section they have here is the setup. So this is where you're gonna learn about the main character. You're gonna your readers are going to learn about your main character. I think this is really important to plot this out pretty in depth so that you're conveying the necessary information to your reader. So it's basically from one to 10% of the novel. And the thing is about NaNoWriMo is that you're only writing a 50,000 word novel. So typically, you know, that's pretty short. Uh, it's good for a first draft, but it's not where it is going to be in terms of your final word count once you actually finish the story. So if we're using 50,000, one to 10% is like 5,000, but in a novel that's 60 or 80,000 where it's gonna be six to 8,000, right? So you just have to keep that in mind. So they call this setup a multi-scene beat, which means like, it's not like the opening image where the opening image is just one scene. So like I said, it's probably just gonna be a paragraph or you know, maybe two, whatever. The setup is a bit longer and they said, right, they said it's multi-scene. What I try and do in the setup is I wanna show the character in a few different situations. I wanna show them to the reader and I wanna show them their flaws and I wanna really tell them about the character. So how do we tell them about the character, right? There's a few options that I like to do here. So you either show them interacting with family, friends, you show them at work. I think that's really a really good place to start in terms of your setup. And this is of course in a contemporary novel I'm talking about, so it might differ for other genres. And again, you wanna show your character's flaws and you wanna show the things in their life 
that need fixing. So you really want to, it's called the setup because you're setting up the story and it's gonna carry through, you know? So you can't start your character off with a perfect life because there would be nothing to fix. So what is wrong? What needs fixing? Is it your character's fault? Is it external? Is it internal? You know, what's going on? And this kind of will hint out and connect to some of the conflict in the story as well. This is something else that I make sure on plot early is the catalyst. I think sometimes this is called the inciting incident as well. But now that I use save the cat all the time, I just refer to it as the catalyst. So it's something that happens that is spurring your character into action. So maybe they lose their job. Maybe they get an opportunity to move to another country. Maybe they break up with their boyfriend or they get broken up with. It's something that is spurring them to action. You know, in the setup, we see their life as something. And the catalyst is going to happen. And then they're going to be like, oh, like something is gonna have to change, which is the debate scene, which we'll get to in a second, but then, yeah. So that's the catalyst, is something that's kind of like uprooting your character and sparking them into action. And this says catalyst often come in the form of bad news, so keep that in mind as well. It could even, you know, it could be death early on in the story as well. And something that really, I think, resonates with me here is they say conflict is what makes for good fiction. And I think that's a really, really important thing to remember. So I spend a lot of time, again, on my setup, my catalyst, and then the debate is always something I have a little bit of trouble with. So the debate is basically whatever the catalyst has sparked into action, it is described as your character taking a step back and deciding how to move forward after the catalyst. This is something, like I said, that I struggle with and I don't always plot it out as well as I should. So now, after the debate, once your character has made their decision, we are going into Act 2, which is going to start with the break into two. And they basically describe this as an upside down world as compared to Act 1. You're just flipping the switch and going into a different world. For example, I mean, everybody's seen The Hunger Games. Uh, I shouldn't generalize. Most people have seen The Hunger Games. So the break into two for Katniss is when she enters the capital when they're going uh, to compete in the Hunger Games. So something, something has changed in their life and now we're viewing the world, we're viewing this new world that the character has broken into. And I definitely, I plot this, but I believe it is a single scene beat and it's just like a, it's a snapshot of the new world. So there's a few things that come after this. Uh, they call it B story and fun and games. I struggle with both of those, even though fun and games is like a huge portion of your story, but that is definitely something you want to plan out quite a bit, which is basically just the story. You know, what you read on the synopsis is the fun and games piece is basically what they say. But if I'm just doing a little quick plot kind of thing here, what I am going to plan out is the midpoint. So it's the middle of your story and I believe it is a false defeat or a false success or win or something. So it's basically a high point in your character's journey or a really low point in your character's journey. Basically, I can really struggle with the B story. I kind of struggle with the fun and games, which is literally a major part of your story. But I do, I spend a lot of time with the midpoint, bad guys close in, the all is lost, and in in a romance novel, that's probably always going to be the characters breaking up. And then Dark Knight of the Soul, which is basically just another debate scene. So, you know, something really terrible is going to happen, the character's going to break up, and then in Dark Knight of the Soul, they're going to wallow, and they're going to go and talk to their friends about it and cry, and all the good post-breakup stuff. So then, we get to Act 3, which is quite a bit shorter. So, Act 3. So we have break into three, the finale, and the final image. So something I like to plan out quite early is the final image. It should be an opposite image of your opening image. It should be very different because obviously you want your character to have progressed throughout the story. So break into three is the solution to their problem. It's the solution to all is lost. So if your characters broke up and all is lost now, they're gonna figure out how they can get back together and make things work in the break into three. Finale, it says, resolves all the problems created in act two, proves your hero has learned something. And then, like I said, the final image is opposite of the opening image. So I'm gonna highlight here kind of what I start off with. When I'm plotting, I'm going to make sure and do the opening image. Oh, I do not like that highlighter color. Let's find a better one. I make sure to focus on the opening image, setup and catalyst. So this is kind of the stuff that I do first. 
I make sure to know what's going on with the break into two, the midpoint, and then the all is lost. And then the final image is something that I definitely make sure to know early on. So you can see that I'm not focusing on everything all at once. When I start plotting my story, these highlighted things are the things that I'm gonna make sure to do first because I think that they guide the rest of my story. Like if I know what's happening in the final image, it can speak to the rest of my story, right? If I know what's happening for the catalyst, then I can go from there and figure out what's going on later on. And then same with the all is lost, same with the midpoint. I just think that it's a good starting point to know these things. Okay, so this video turned out to be a little different than I was thinking. So I think I'm going to end the video here and kind of leave it as a little bit more of a sit down video. And then this is like episode two of my writing a book in 30 day series. And then episode three is just gonna be more of a vloggy episode showing me actually doing my plotting. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got some good information that will help you plot your novel for NaNoWriMo. I would love to hear what you're working on in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.